Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this mission, we're starting off on the moon, going back to the Earth, and the goal here is to arrive so that we're in plane with our target base and we're far enough in front or behind, depending on how you look at it, uh, far enough away from the target base so that we can use the atmosphere as a break and do an immediate landing without getting into orbit around the Earth first or going all the way around the Earth before completing our landing. So let's go ahead and jump back into the next part here. Let me unpause. Uh, when we left off, we were about 10 minutes away from the time to do the ejection. And in the previous video, we spent quite a bit of time fiddling with our variables. And our goal is to have a PEA at Earth that's about 60 kilometers. And you can see we're really close to that. And we can refine that number with a little bit of a cleanup burn after the um, actual main burn is done. And we also want a longitude of about 125 degrees west. You can see we're really close to that. We're three degrees away from that target, but that's fine, that's workable. And finally, uh, we need an angle to be really close to zero, as close to zero as possible. And we are about a quarter of a degree off, which means that our alignment with, um, with Cape Canaveral is going to be off just a, just a tiny little bit. But luckily, the Earth has a thick atmosphere, so we'll be able to get into alignment just by using the Earth's atmosphere to glide. But even so, since we are attempting to do this uh, braking and landing right away, we do want to, this to be as close to zero as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up the, uh, the burn vector and hit auto burn. And we'll just go ahead and warp time forward now. And we'll let uh, IMFD take over and complete this burn for us. And once the burn's complete, we will do just a little bit of tweaking with the linear translation thrusters just to make sure we dial in our numbers where we want. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the plan. And that way, as the burn commences, we'll see what's going on in real time. So here comes the burn. And when this is done, our PEA is probably gonna be like, in my experience, around 70 or 80. So we'll have to tweak it a little bit but everything else will be pretty close. So yeah, you can see our PA is 95, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm in linear translation, which I am, and I believe I need forward translation. Yeah, so with a little bit of forward translation, I'm just cleaning up the burn ever so slightly. Now I'm gonna do some control thrusts, and there we have our, our PEA really close to the target that we want, and our longitude, again, really close to 122 degrees, and our angle, is about just about a little over a quarter of a degree off from where we want. So let me go ahead and bring up orbit now. Let me reference Earth. And projection is already shipped. That's already done. And let's go ahead and bring up map. We're already referenced the Earth. And we've already targeted Cape Canaveral. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and warp time forward. We want to get really close to the Earth at this point. So we're going to do some pretty aggressive time warp here. Watching the PET come down to 10,000 at this point. Watching the PET. Let's go down to 1,000. Now let me watch the altitude. So when the altitude gets down to about 2M, let's call it, I want to go back to real time so I can start making decisions. So we're about there. All right, let's go back to real time now, and let's put the vessel in prograde position. Let me change this display line to orbit plane. And you can see, uh, this gives me a good chance to explain the angle. Let me zoom in on case, uh, KSC here. If the angle, according to uh, the interplanetary map program, if the angle were like five degrees, plus or minus, then this line, this orbital plane that's passing over Cape Canaveral, it would be like down here maybe, or it would be up here. And if your angle's really far off, you know, your, your orbital plane would be over South America somewhere or somewhere way up over Canada. And you just don't have enough time to glide the vessel into, um, into alignment with the base. And I don't know at the moment, but as we go forward, this angle might, uh, this, this orbital line might actually shift to the north or it might continue shifting further south. We'll have to see what happens. Okay, so... Let me now, um, one thing I do want to do, my PEA is 60.62. I really want that to be as close to 60 as possible. 
So now that we're in um, in the prograde position, I have linear translation thrusters on. I'm just going to press the inward translation just to bring that all the way down to 60. Because a few meters makes a big difference when you're doing these atmospheric braking maneuvers. All right, so there we go. And we're about 1,000 kilometers, uh, about 15, about 1,600 kilometers still up. So we have time to get our vessel prepared for this aggressive um, atmospheric braking maneuver that we're about to perform. So I'm gonna go into the attitude hold autopilot by pressing the number two on the top of the keyboard, not the numeric keypad, but the top of the keyboard. And we, we have our pitch. It's already set the set pitch, which is what we want. And I want, um, I'm actually going to set the banking first and we want the bank to be negative 180 and then I want a really aggressive pitch so I'm going to go all the way to 72.5 alright we'll go with that and eventually we have to bring in the radiator and the retro doors or else we'll burn up but I'm not quite ready to do that yet because we still have a little ways to go down I'm going to go ahead and bring up surface MFD on this side. I'm going to switch to orbital speed. And usually when we're at entry interface or 120 kilometers, our orbital speed will be right at 11,000 meters per second, give or take a couple of meters. All right, now, so that I don't have to do it later, I also want to set up arrow brake now. So I'm going to target Cape Canaveral. And I'm going to press page and PRJ to get this uh, set up how I want. And you can see right now, you know, Arrow Brake has this uh, pretty much, let me change the screen here so you can see better, has this pretty much cutting straight across the base. You know, just the slightest tweak in our bank and we'll be right over top of the base. Okay, now I think that's everything that I want to set up for now. Rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and help out the Attitude Hold Autopilot by getting the vessel more or less into the position that I want it to be in. And I gotta watch my altitude, make sure that, you know, I don't get too low. So we're going to roll over so that the canopy is down towards the earth, so a, effectively we're upside down. And then we're gonna roll so that we're facing into the earth so that the hot part or the back of the vessel is into the atmosphere. And it's about right here, roughly. So that's going to be a, a, the approximate position that the vessel is going to be in. I'll see if I can rotate the external view so you can get the idea. Unfortunately, it's we're arriving at Earth at night, so it's really hard to see. But if you can tell at all in the video playback, the Earth is moving, you know, this way. So this the back part of the vessel is what's going to be our heat shield. All right, so we're going to go a little bit farther forward. Then we're going to turn on the APU and we're going to bring in our stuff so that we don't burn up but we do want to get you know lower than this because we don't have to worry about any atmosphere till we're you know well under 200 kilometers so let's just do a little bit of time warp get down a little bit more so there's 500 kilometers 400 kilometers it's coming up to 300 and we'll come out of time warp at 200 Right there's 200, and you can see that our orbital speed right now is 10.9, is and by the time we hit entry interface, it's going to be really, really close to exactly 11,000. So I think we're going to be about right there. So let's go ahead and turn on the APU now, and let's stow our stuff. Radiator takes a while to come in. So we're at about 150 kilometers. I'm going to go ahead and engage the attitude hold autopilot now. Okay, so my angle was a little bit off, but really close. You can see now we're at 10,980. And when we hit entry interface, let's see what our let's see what our orbital speed is. I'm a bit curious because in in the, my practice sessions, I've noticed that yeah, it's really close to 11,000. Just we were just a little bit away from that. All right, so I'm going to bring up orbit on this side, 
and we will see our apoapsis starting to decay and the lower we get the more rapidly it will decay and I want to watch uh, one of the main one of the big things I'm going to be watching is my vertical speed my vertical acceleration after the main part of the atmospheric braking maneuver is complete but for now you know we're uh, getting into the thicker thicker part of the atmosphere the vessel is going to turn white hot here very soon we're probably going to get some uh, temperature I'm sure we'll get some temperature warnings but we shouldn't overheat the airframe um, with this maneuver and you can see our apoapsis is coming down very quickly now because we're getting a lot of deceleration here go ahead and take a look at the vessel as it glows red hot it's always interesting to see the uh, you know the vessel heating up and we'll check our temperatures we're gonna get much hotter than this we're gonna redline the vessel you can see our apoapsis has come down by a, a ton at this point you can see the glass the vessel is just getting white hot at this point so we're definitely redlining things we're gonna get those uncomfortable uh, temperature warnings but in my experience this altitude and this angle works so um, warning hull temperature so there's our temperature warning you can see we'll probably top out around 2500 hull temperature so 2443 was the biggest number warning. i saw hull temperature. now we're starting to cool back off i'm gonna go ahead and switch warning. back hull over to this view so i can keep a closer eye on the velocity uh the vertical speed rather so we don't want to climb back out so i'm going to start pitching the vessel so that my vertical acceleration goes down because I don't want to go back out into space and this I'm not too worried about so I'm gonna bring up map at this point and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I do want to keep an eye on my alignment so I need a bit more here you can see right now we're cutting straight across the northern part of Cape Canaveral I'm very comfortable with that but we may need to make a little bit of refinement if that starts to you know, get too far away. So let's go down more. Wasn't paying attention. So I, my vertical acceleration is now negative, which means my vertical speed will go into the, will eventually go into the negative and we'll start decreasing altitude again. But I just wanna make sure that I don't climb so far back out that I can't get back down because in that case, I will overshoot Cape Canaveral. put in just a little bit more now I don't want to overdo the vertical acceleration in this direction because then I'll bite back down into the atmosphere and lose control of the vessel in the other direction and I'll burn up because I'm still traveling at 8,500 meters a second so I'm still moving very fast so now it becomes a bit of a balancing act where I want to keep the vessel around this altitude so I just want to keep my vertical speed and my vertical acceleration within a stone's Mark throw of zero 26. so that I'm in control of what's going on. So I'm just going to pitch the vessel a bit back in the other direction. Vertical acceleration is now positive, which means my vertical speed will start getting closer to zero. But right now we're digging back down into the atmosphere, so our temperature is increasing. But we're fine at this point. Go ahead and pitch back a little bit more this way, get that vertical speed closer to zero. Mach 25. And somewhere around, probably when we get really close to 7,000 meters a second, I need to pitch the vessel back the other direction so that I'm basically horizontal or I'm parallel with the, with the ground. And then I will uh, roll the vessel back over and then we'll pitch in the other direction Mark so that we can 24. break into, into uh, Cape Canaveral. So you can see our vertical acceleration it's kind of positive, not exactly. Uh, in fact, it just went back into the negative. Now the vertical speed's negative, so now I got to really watch things closely at this point. Because if I if I'm not careful, I'll get really low, and I won't have any control over it, and I'll burn up. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna call 59 kilometers my 
my breaking point. When I get at 59, I'm going to come out of I'm going to come out of uh, the attitude hold autopilot, but well, I'm still slowing 22. down because you can see our vertical speed's quite negative. So there's 59 kilometers. So I'm going to turn off the autopilot, set the trim back to zero, and we're going to pitch the vessel. to prograde essentially. 21. And you can see we're extremely negative on our vertical speed, so we're digging deep into the atmosphere very quick. quick. So I need to roll over very quickly. Fuel 70%. And we're gonna switch back to this view. And we're gonna zero everything out. Warning, hull temperature. We need to pitch the vessel up aggressively. That's actually I want AOA. So we're getting very hot again, but we're okay. We're cooling back off now. I want to bring up arrow brake. Mark twenty. So I can pay attention. All right. So we're pitched. Let's go here. So we're pitched up a bit too much now. We're we're coming up shy of the base. So I'm now lowering the nose so I can have more glide time. And now you can see, let me switch back to these views, you can see our green line uh, extending out well past the base. I'm actually okay with that for now because we still have got a ways to go. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the distance is at the moment, I'll check. I'm going to put in a bit of right bank to pull the vessel more to the south. Because you, as you can see, that green line was a bit to the north. Alright, so I don't really feel like I need surface up anymore, so I'm going to go back to... What do I want on this side map? Let's map what I want. Let me let me also bring up glide slope. And yeah, let me actually think about this one. So Cape Canaveral is targeted. I want previous runway. I'm probably going to end up landing on runway 13 is my guess. Or rather probably 15. Let me just check that really quick. Yeah, probably runway 15 is the one I'm going to want. So I'm going to have that selected for now. And we'll hit OK. And I really like having this up because it just helps me know that I'm on target, not only for the base, which I can see in arrow break or map, but it lets me know that I'm on, I'm on the right alignment to arrive at the base so that I'm in front or behind the runway by enough. Go ahead and pitch back a little bit. That's uh, a bit too much. I think we can probably take out some of this bank now. So I'm going to go ahead and have myself, according to arrow break, I'm going to have myself overshooting the base by a little bit for now. And then I will just break more aggressively once we get in closer. Okay, but I can see, once again, we're coming up to about 20 minutes on this part of the series. So let me hit the pause button, switch over to the big view. And yeah, when we come back, hopefully we'll have enough time to finalize everything and complete the landing. It might end up being two more parts because uh, sometimes gliding down through the atmosphere just takes a while and you can't really do much time warp. So if you enjoyed this part of the series, please hit that like button down below and I'll see you in the next part.